they have holes in them which tells us, okay, these red blood cells are not functional. So if they are not functional, meaning that they're lacking hemoglobin and everything else, this is putting this person now in a state of an anemia. Okay, understand that these red blood cells, even though they have, if they are counting these red blood cells even as count, um, but these are not functional red blood cells for count. Okay, just to let you know. And, and most of these look like they're dying. They're on their way out. Okay. So, this is a very good slide of CML. This slide, just to let you know, is on eCollege. Okay, please make sure you review all the slides that I'm going to go over today because you will be tested on them next week. Okay. Yes. Sorry, you said the white spots on the... Um this one, the neutrophils there are indicating that. Oh, it's it's almost like a lysing. So the cytoplasm is lysing, meaning that the, the cell is dying pretty much. It's going into cell death. <coughs> okay, now, can someone hit the lights for me again? Please? Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move on. Okay, now, clinical signs and symptoms of patients that do have CML. Okay, so um, usually they will present with a high grain lecidic count, okay, on the CBC, which we saw in the picture. All these neutrophils just kind of sticking there. Splenomegaly, they will have. They will sometimes have fatigue, weight loss, so all the other things that can go along with just the regular kind of signs and symptoms that go along with any cancer, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, prognosis and treatment. CML does not respond well to chemotherapy. So what they do is they actually have a sort of gene therapy that they came up with with these individuals because we know that is a, it is a specific, uh, excuse me, a specific gene, look, dis, uh, not dislocation, excuse me, translocation, okay, of 9 and 22. So basically, they can give them an anti-BCR ABL therapy, and that will reduce the number of the leukemic cells that are undetected or may be pretty much progressing, okay, or going through stages of mitosis. So please keep that in mind because these individuals, now that they know the actual gene, they can give them this sort of gene therapy. Now, these individuals can also have the allogenic bone marrow transplant, that's what B BMT stands for, BMT stands for bone marrow transplant, and that is for a suitable donor, but they say the autogenic type is less effective for these individuals, so they usually don't do it. Now, let me go over another term that we're talking about here. They say the blast stage of CML is basically AML. So when you see the term BLAST, I want you to know that that is talking about the leukemia in its acute form. Okay, so anytime you see BLAST, that's telling us that it's an immature cell and that this is talking about a leukemia in its acute form. Now, it says it has a very poor prognosis. Most of the times, just to let you know, acute leukemias have a poorer prognosis than a chronic leukemias because acute leukemia is a very uh, fast-acting type of disease process, so as you know, it's a more extreme. Now, let me do AML, and then we're going to take a break, okay? So we'll do the myeloids and finish up, and then we'll do the lymphocytic. So, <clears throat> AML, we have 80% of cases are adults, 64 years of age, okay? So please note the age there. So this is a transformation of the myeloid stem cell, which most leukemias are. Okay. And bone marrow aspirin must have 20% blast. So what do we mean by that? 20% blast meaning that it has to have at least 20% of the immature cells that are actually involved here. Okay. Now, they do have different subtypes, and I already told you and warned you about the subtypes because some acute leukemias, because depending on which stage of the immaturity process is going through can have different subtypes. Okay. They have a system here called FAB, which it's nothing really much I have to say about that. But FAB stands for French American British. That's I know it's not sorry, but that's what it stands for. French American British. Um, it's just a system that they use to classify the different subtypes. Okay, so that's all. 
Now, the most common type of AML is the acute brand lacidic leukemia, which is also often, they say, interchangeable with AML. So you'll hear AML or acute brand lacidic leukemia. But I think in the clinical field, they use more AML, from my understanding. Okay, I think they use AML mostly. Now, here we go. I'm sorry, can you hit the lights again? What is the issue here? Okay, so somebody said large nucleus. Okay, I don't know who said that, but large nucleus. And what is going on with the cytoplasm? It's it, well, it's not so much debris. This is actually supposed to be granulars. I'm sorry, say that again. What, what else do you see here? Clumping. But what else about the cell itself? Can you see the immaturity in the cell? Let me just explain. This is supposed to be a neutrophil, believe it or not. What is the immaturity in this cell? Tell me what are some things that are immature about this neutrophil. No the granulars are very few, very good. There's very few to almost no granulars, okay, which means that the granulars are not forming yet. What else makes this cell immature? The shape of the nucleus. Keep in mind that the nucleus in a mature neutrophil is supposed to have a bilobe shape. This is just big and taking over the whole cell, okay? which also gives us a, a pretty heads up of a malignancy, okay? Because remember how I showed you before with the cervical dysplasia and how those cells were just clumped together and it, all you saw was just a big dark nucleus? So it almost, not to say that it looks like cervical dysplasia, but some of the characteristics are like that, okay, with this one. Um, so these are supposed to be neutrophils. As you can see, yes, they are extremely immature because of the cytoplasm. Is, some, some of it is not even formed on some of the cells. Some of the cytoplasm, as you can see, does not have enough granulars, okay, or any at all, like this one. Very large nucleus, which is uh, definitely another sign of an immature cell. And then, as you can see, all of this clustering together tells us that this is a malignancy that's going on, okay, along with the size here. And if we look at in the background here, what's going on with the red blood cells? Same situation, okay, where they are definitely dying off and not functional and most likely leading this patient into an anemia, okay, that's going along with this. So this is a, another nice slide. This is AML, again, pictures are in your book and also on eCollege. <coughs> okay. So they do have different subtypes. Okay, now I'm not going to test you on that. I know you will choke me if I'm going to give you all of those numbers to <laughs> memorize. Okay, so all I need you to know is that they do have different subtypes, and the worst outcome is when the subtype has a loss of the P53 or the RB tumor suppression gene. Okay, so just make sure you know that those are the worst outcomes with those particular genes. But they do have all different subtypes, okay, according to maturation process. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, presentation is very similar to ALL. ALL and AML do have sort of like the same signs and symptoms, okay, because they are both acute, very rapid um, affecting type leukemias. Um, oops. They do have bone pain, anemia, thrombocytopenia, so all the things that we talked about that normal patients, excuse me, patients normally have with cancer. Common infection sites, skin, GI, gastrointestinal, GU is genital urinary, and respiratory tracts. What do all four of these systems have in common? Skin, GI, GU, and respiratory. Epithelium, that is where? Very good to the environment, to the external environment. So all of these areas, okay, do open into the external environment. So skin, okay, genital urinary, as we know, okay, opens to the external environment. Uh, gastrointestinal also opens into the external environment. And respiratory, okay. So now these patients are more susceptible because of whatever type of 
harmful microorganisms that are floating around in the air of getting infections to these particular areas of their bodies. Okay. Now, they give you here the prognosis. <clears throat> okay, you can read that. It's uh, nothing I need to really go over. So the prognosis is worse for AML than ALL. Uh, they give you children here, 30% adult survival all the time. Okay. Now, this is a nice chart here that gives you the whole breakdown, okay, of acute and chronic leukemias. I will tell you to please highlight this chart. Please make sure you know this because what it'll do is it'll help you with your studying and going through, okay, all the different types, okay, and I kind of went pretty much over this anyway. You would have another page that's on In the book, uh, two, thank you. 224. Thank you so much. 224 in the book. So, prognosis and treatment. 224, 244. Because sometimes I'm this late. It looks different in this book than it oh. does on your thing, but it's 224. Is that the new book? Oh, wait. Yeah. No, it's 222. 222. Page 222. Okay, so treatment protocols here. These individuals will have definitely um, chemotherapy. Okay, and the goal here with chemotherapy is to definitely, they do it in two phases, is to make sure that they have a remission induction, so they want to try to get all the cells healthy and back to where they need to be, and then they will also give them a post-remission, okay, of more chemotherapy after. So they do have individualized therapy for that. And just to let you know, these two cycles of ICE and DAT, um, you don't have to know the, the full name for that. But basically, this is just the chemotherapy drugs, the protocol that is used. Okay, so that's just chemotherapy drugs. Okay. So let's take a break here. We're going to start with the myeloid and then come back with the lymphoid leukemia. Yes, I know we need a break. Can you just turn that camera?